study we did on 10 newborn babies, um, we found 287 chemicals, which is quite a lot, an average of 200 chemicals in these newborn babies. So that's in their blood cord, that's in their blood streams and so forth. 28 waste byproducts, so PC beads, which we don't make here in Australia, we don't even import them, we always imported them, they're in electrical cords, etc. They were actually banned in the 70s and we're still seeing them in our newborn babies today. They bioaccumulate in the environment, for example, we're still seeing them. Um, PCBs, it's really interesting, when you go around the world, so I did research around the world, the indicator of how high PCBs are in a country is actually taken by butter. Australia's in terms of because cows are consuming it, we're using the butter from the cows and so forth. Australia actually has got very low amounts of PCBs in our environment compared to the United States and Europe, for example. We only imported PCBs. So at, one, at, at some stage we're able to say we're not bringing PCBs back in the environment. And yet, banned 30 years ago and we're still seeing them in our newborn babies today, for example. Petroleum, lead, cadmium, a lot of what Laura was talking about before, coppers and so forth, they're absolutely there. They're, they're the things that are coming out of the smokestacks. You know, they're in our newborn babies today, unfortunately. 47 consumer products, what do you think they might be? Consumer products, the stuff that are around our house, what do you think they might be? Bug sprays, deodorizers, perfumes, our shampoos, skincare, you know, all of those things, cleaning products, they're showing up in our newborn babies and in our mothers, unfortunately. Bisphenol A, Teflon, you know, and you know when you get into a car and you have that new car smell, phthalates, Teflon, you know, Scotch Guard that keeps things kind of stain resistant. And yet, you know, you've got these kids absorbing it and you've got these mamas. Well, actually, it's mamas absorbing it and bubbas then absorbing it from mama in terms of that environment, that ecosystem. Vinyl fragrances are a significant... Fragrances are in everything and they're showing up in our newborn babies. And the problem with labelling these days is that most labels don't actually have to say what's in a fragrance. I mean, there's hundreds of... You know, in one fragrance, there's hundreds of ingredients. We don't actually... So if anything says perfume, perfume, fragrance, it actually is synthetic and it's in our newborn babies and in our mamas these days. Dioxin, salad, flame retardants I think are probably going to be the next biggest things. Flame retardants are in particularly things like um, furnishings, our children's pyjamas are a really significant one. We have never ever done any testing on flame retardants. They are a very low um, dose chemical. We've never done any, and yet we're seeing them in our newborn babies and we're seeing kind of rising rates around endocrine disruption, hormone disruption. So when they were first introduced flame retardants, it was when we had open fires. And I would probably, probably argue that it's more of a risk to have flame retardants in our clothes than what it is to actually get burnt, for example, in a fire. So if you can get organic cottons or, or fabrics that don't have flame retardants in anything that says flame retardants, it's a significant one. The other one in there is triclosan. Has anyone heard of triclosan, microban? It's pretty much in everything. It's the anti You know, the world has become really antibacterial. You know, we need really good bugs. We also, there is some bad bugs, but we also need the good bugs to get rid of the bad, bad bugs. What we're seeing with triclosan, it's in everything. It's in our chopping boards, it's in our socks, it's in plastics. Um, anything that has antibacterial will be triclosan. It's never been tested. The FDA in the United States is now actually looking at it because we're seeing such dramatic problems with our children today in terms of disorders and endocrine disruption and so forth. So fragrances are a really big one, flame retardants, pesticides, everyone would know here, pesticides. We're seeing massive amounts of pesticides and a real range of pesticides. We also did a study about three years ago in Tasmania and we know just the amount of spray that occurs from one end of the island can show up in our baby's blood on the other side of the island, for example. So we know that it's not contained. Um, we know we use them in, in vast proportions in Australia and so forth. So organic farming is the way to go. The other probably most disturbing of, of chemicals that we're seeing in newborn babies and hence mothers as well, 212 industrial chemicals and pesticides banned 30 years ago. How are they turning up in our bloodstream, do you think? If they were banned 30 years ago, why are they still here, do you think? Any ideas? What we're seeing today is that 
most of you probably would have heard of bioaccumulation, biomagnification. What we're seeing today, even though we've banned PCBs, some pesticides, some plastics, they hang out in the environment for a really long period of time. Um, something like DDT, which was used in the war, um, it was banned in the 1960s here in Australia. We so, for example, DDT is a really good one. My parents, or well, my grandparents gave it to my parents. They gave it to me when I was born. I've given it to my children, and it'll probably go on for about two or three more generations before we can actually get rid of it out of the environment. And there'll always be some traces there. And even though that's shocking, some of the chemicals we're introducing today will have, we'll be talking, my parents, my kids will probably be having the same conversation in 30 years' time talking about the chemicals that we introduce today that are showing up in their babies' bodies, for example. We don't have the regulation systems, unfortunately, that other countries do, um, and that's, I guess, what Chemical Free Kids is actually doing. So quite shocking. The other thing is, I think, this one. I mean, I guess what I pose this question, what kind of a culture produces products with this kind of a warning? This is a warning in the United States. We just travelled to the Environmental Working Group in the United States. Their, their, their actual plastic, so their rubber duckies, have to have this warning. This product contains chemicals known to cause cancer, birth defects and other reproductive harm, state of California. Exactly the same rubber ducky we have in Australia. We just don't have to have the labels, for example. Shocking, isn't it? And so I guess we, we start to pose those questions. Why, why are we introducing chemicals if they're showing up in our newborn babies? You know, why are we introducing chemicals if they've got this? And giving them to our children, for example and it has those intergenerational impacts. Of these 287 chemicals, we know that they cause cancer. They're directly linked to cancer. We don't test uh, in terms of children, but what we test is with um, mainly mice. Um, so there's testing on animals. We know they cause cancer, both to adult mice and children, or baby mice. Birth defects, so we're seeing a whole lot of birth defects going on, hormone disruption. Infertility is a significant one. You know, there's something, I'll, I'll go through it a little bit later, but it, it, you know, infertility is a significant one. Immune system toxicity and neurotoxicity. And I'm going to go through what kind of implications that's actually had in terms of our kind of, um, you know, disease rate in Australia. Iocide, what does Iocide mean? Any words you can think of with Iocide in them? Pesticide. What are the ones? Herbicide. Weedicide. Homicide, <laughs> suicide. What do you think that says about, what does it mean? It means to kill. And we forget, we don't link pesticide necessarily to that idea of suicide or homicide, do we? It's exactly, they're designed, and we forget this. People will go, just a little bit, it's all right, just a little bit. They're, they're designed to kill. They mean, you know, it means death essentially to kill or to murder. The only difference, the only difference is actually that change in the, the dose amounts. So people kind of do a little bit of pesticides around the house, for example. But the question I have is that any chemical these days is not measured by children, it's measured by adults. So we've got these tiny little babies crawling along the ground, licking whatever they can. They lick a lot of different things. They, you know, crawling up walls. And so we've got these little babies still impacted significantly by pesticides. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But we forget that, and I always put it up there, because we forget that those little bit of weed aside we add into the garden, or a bit of pesticides, it means to kill. Anything with eyesight means to kill. And they are very effective at low doses. Um, and they, they attack the central nervous system. We're not that much different in terms of bugs. Bugs, you know, they've still got a nervous system like us. They're designed to impact the, the neurons in our brains. They have that kind of an impact. And this is the latest study that occurred in 2010, I think it was, yeah. We know that when we tested children and drew out the blood of children with pesticides, that the, the higher levels of pesticides in children were related directly to higher incidences of uh, or, you know, a diagnosis of AD, ADD and ADHD, um, higher incidences of behavioural problems and higher rates of intellectual disorders. It kind of makes sense. And yet we're only doing this research now. So the amount of chemicals that are actually going on in the environment compared to the science, um, I mean, the science is really lagging behind. Um, and I'm going to talk about the law in a little bit later. So that's what we're seeing in terms of children. This is what makes children particularly vulnerable. And as I said before, we don't test 
rates or amounts in children. We, te we test chemicals by the threshold of adults, which is still problematic.